Is Cuphead like a thing? Well, it is now, but just how like is it? Let's find out in our full review of Enchanted Portals. Hey, why don't you sip on a cup of Joe over at patreon.com slash I dream of indie games. Get it? My name's Joe. Uh, whatever. It's like an OnlyFans, but nobody's naked and there are free games depending on the tier. Your community is waiting. It's pretty hard to deny the inspiration behind Enchanted Portals. It's also pretty hard to believe Cuphead came out all the way back in 2017 now. The combination of 1930s cartoon visuals smooth jazz and intense difficulty captivated indie gaming fans. But just what was it about Cuphead that made it so engaging and appealing to a wide audience? Was it really the things I mentioned or was it some damn good game design? One thing is for certain, Enchanted Portals fails to capture any of that magic. The cup did not runneth over for this one. Enchanted Portals can be played in single player or co-op and you'll take control of Bobby and Penny who are on a quest to recapture a magic missing book. Most of this tale is told through static images with a few animated bits sprinkled in for good measure. These scenes take place before you begin a new world and sometimes during boss encounters, which are typically the third phase of whichever world you're in. The story is completely forgettable, barely there, and more or less a means to an end. I felt no attachment to these characters, there's no life to them at all, and no real motive throughout. As for the gameplay, Enchanted Portals places more of an emphasis on its platforming stages than Cuphead ever did, but also still has the multi-staged boss battles players would expect. The core mechanics involve you jumping, double jumping, shooting, using your shield, dashing, and changing ammunition type. There are three different ammunitions that each work a bit differently from one another. For example, green is a spread shot and red, which really looks kind of orange or like fire, is a bit more powerful. The game does a really poor job of letting you know which weapon you've selected. You use the D-pad to toggle between them, however there's no on-screen indicator, so I was forced to memorize which direction on the pad matched each color. Early on in the first world, enemies would appear with an aura around them that corresponds with the type of shot needed to eliminate them. A neat idea, but also a bit clunky in execution. I often had to stop in my tracks, shuffle through the weapons, and then select the right one and begin firing. It really slows the momentum, it feels like the game is trying to build up, and ends up becoming rather tedious. I should also mention you can lock the trajectory of your shot, but you won't be able to move while doing so, and you also have a special that fills up which makes your shots more powerful for a limited amount of time. Most of these abilities felt pretty useless due to the game horrendous level design which felt uninspired and poorly planned out. There was no real pattern to any of these levels as they just throw a barrage of random nonsense in your path and expect you to break your back trying to dodge it. Cuphead was great for its patterns that could be learned, practiced, and executed precisely. You felt like you were making progress towards a greater goal which made your ultimate success feel all that much more rewarding. Here I was on a hamster wheel unable to learn from my mistakes because it never felt like I had anything to learn from. The level design design feels like it loops on repeat at times, and other times it feels randomly generated with an endless barrage of zany enemies, baffling projectiles, and ridiculous hurdles. You do reach a 50% checkpoint eventually in levels, but I shouldn't even really call it a checkpoint, as if you die, it's back to the beginning. So what's the point? I guess so you can simmer in your own failure? Even weirder, the color concept gets abandoned entirely in later worlds, where cheap hits are plentiful and health is impossible to regain. The game has three difficulty levels, easy normal and insane, and the only real difference appears to be how bountiful health drops are. But unfortunately, even on easy, once you reach the third world, which I'll be honest was the last one I could take, there are entire levels where there is no health to be collected at all. And they call that easy? I might as well have gone for insane at that point, because that's exactly how I felt trying to do the same thing over and over again despite my many failures. Sometimes the best strategy is to try to run through the level as quickly as possible, not shooting or dodging anything and hoping you get lucky but even then it's a complete crapshoot. And then we have the co-op. Hoping to play with a friend, you can forget about it. It's incredibly frustrating to even attempt to progress together. Hell, player one can abandon player two entirely, and that might be your only chance of surviving. There's nothing in place to keep the screen from scrolling right past player two, which sometimes makes the platforming sections near impossible. There's one section where you jump on crocodile heads that jump out of the water at complete random, decimating your health and lowering your progress even further. Remember when DKC2 made jumping on Gator Head's fun? Not anymore. Should you take damage around a pit or water, you'll enter gameplay again via a hovering portal. This portal can only hold your weight for so long and will drop you like a turd in a toilet when you least expect it, especially for poor player two in co-op mode. That guy doesn't stand a chance. I have more control when I take a dump after feasting on a healthy helping of Taco Bell. Jeez. <laughs> 
As bad as the platforming levels are, the boss encounters just aren't much better. The first phase of the initial boss was clever enough, and Silent Signs and I even learned a strategy of sorts. But later phases of that very same boss became laughably bad. These boss levels are about as much fun as sitting through Jared Leto's stunning portrayal of Morbius while sober. You might survive, but you're not gonna feel great afterwards. Upon defeating one of these baddies, things just abruptly and unceremoniously end. No cool death animations or anything, just transported right into the next misadventure. This feels about as good as running into your ex at the supermarket. No closure and kinda awkward. There is one good thing I can say about Enchanted Portals and that's that the visuals are really quite impressive, as far as the character design and animations go at least. Backgrounds are a bit of a snore fest and don't really add or subtract anything from the equation, but there are some fun themed enemies like the Trojan viruses in World 2 or the needle wielding mosquitoes. Everything animates beautifully and the bosses, while not all that fun to fight, are painstakingly drawn and impressive to look at. It's just a shame that the gameplay didn't get the same love and care because it's clear a lot of love went into the visual design. No, it doesn't quite match the aesthetic of Cuphead, but it's pretty damn impressive regardless. Another strange occurrence in this game was an abrupt jitter or jump on screen at the start of each new level. At first I attributed it to the co-op, but it happened again while I was going it alone, leading me to believe it's an issue with the game itself. There were also some instances where my character would get hung up on platforms or be dumped from my butthole portal into the level and just spin aimlessly until I took damage and died. Still, Credit where it's due, they set out to make a game that looks like Cuphead, and while it does cut some corners, they were moderately successful at doing so, glitches and all. As for the sound design, it isn't all that memorable, nor is it particularly offensive, it's just kind of there. All I know is I wanted it to stop while I was playing, and I can't remember a note of it after I stopped. It tries to capture whimsy of old-timey cartoons, but doesn't effectively bottle that magic into a catchy tune at any point throughout the game. The game also doesn't feature any voice acting, so there's really nothing to add personality or life to the characters. And you know, I really wanted to like Enchanted Portals because we've seen a lot of indies become at least moderately successful attempting to emulate popular titles. I'm looking at Vampire Survivors clones in particular, or even Souls likes. Sadly, I just don't have a lot of positives to say about my time with this game. Some of the concepts are there and the art is certainly impressive, but at the end of the day, these elements don't add up to a good video game. Poor game design, improperly planned out levels, and a lack of personality make it a forgettable experience. So it's with a heavy heart that I gotta reward this one the indie Krampus. <laughs> I'd love to see this developer take some of these concepts and artistic choices and pour them into a more fleshed out product. As it stands, I just can't recommend this title. 